Peptide Synthesis, Wikipedia Article Audio In organic chemistry, peptide synthesis is the production of peptides, which are organic compounds in which multiple amino acids are linked via amide bonds, also known as peptide bonds. Peptides can be chemically synthesized by coupling the carboxyl group of one amino acid to the amino group of another amino acid molecule. Due to the possibility of unintended reactions, protecting groups are usually necessary. Chemical peptide synthesis most commonly starts at the carboxyl end of the peptide, and proceeds toward the amino terminus. The biosynthesis of peptides or proteins in living organisms occurs in the opposite direction, and is known as protein biosynthesis. Solid phase synthesis Peptide coupling reagents Carbodiamides Aminium-slash-uronium and phosphonium salts Solid supports Protecting groups schemes Box slash BZL SPPS FMOC slash T Bulletin SPPS Other protecting groups Benzyloxycarbonyl Alloc and miscellaneous groups Regioselective disulfide bond formation Synthesizing long peptides Microwave assisted peptide synthesis Cyclic peptides On resin cyclization Off resin cyclization The chemical synthesis of peptides can be carried out using classical solution phase techniques, although these have been replaced in most research and development settings by solid phase methods. Solution phase synthesis retains its usefulness in large-scale production of peptides for industrial purposes however. Chemical synthesis facilitates the production of peptides which are difficult to express in bacteria, the incorporation of unnatural amino acids, peptide-slash-protein backbone modification, and the synthesis of D-proteins, which consist of D-amino acids. The established method for the production of synthetic peptides in the lab is known as solid phase peptide synthesis. Pioneered by Robert Bruce Merrifield, SPPS caused a paradigm shift within the peptide synthesis community, and allows the rapid assembly of a peptide chain through successive reactions of amino acids onto an insoluble porous support. The solid support consists of small, polymeric resin beads functionalized with reactive linker groups onto which peptide chains can be built. The peptide remains covalently attached to the support throughout the synthesis, allowing it to be easily isolated from reagents and reaction by-products after each step via simple filtration and washing of the polymer beads with the reaction solvent. This approach circumvents the comparatively time-consuming isolation of the product peptide from solution after each reaction step, which would be required when using conventional solution phase synthesis. Each amino acid to be coupled to the peptide chain N-terminus must be protected on its N-terminus and side chain using appropriate protecting groups such as BOC or FMOC depending on the side chain and the protection strategy used. This avoids unwanted reaction at those groups during the peptide coupling step, which occurs between the peptide N-terminal amine and the C-terminal carboxylate of the amino acid to be coupled. The general SPPS procedure is one of repeated cycles of alternate N-terminal deprotection and coupling reactions, with resin washes between each step. The free N-terminal amine of the peptide is coupled to a single N-protected amino acid unit. The N-terminal protecting group is removed in the subsequent step, revealing a new N-terminal amine onto which a further amino acid may be attached. 
At the end of the synthesis the crude peptide is cleaved from the solid support using a reagent such as anhydrous hydrogen fluoride or trifluoroacetic acid, depending on the chemistry used. The crude peptide can be purified using reversed phase HPLC. SPPS is limited by reaction yields and typically peptides and proteins in the range of 70 amino acids are pushing the limits of synthetic accessibility. Synthetic difficulty also is sequence dependent, typically aggregation prone sequences such as amyloids are difficult to make. Longer lengths can be accessed by using ligation approaches such as native chemical ligation, where two shorter fully deprotected synthetic peptides can be joined together in solution. An important feature that has enabled the broad application of SPPS is the generation of extremely high yields in the coupling step. To illustrate the impact of suboptimal coupling yields for a given synthesis, consider the case where each coupling step were to have at least 99% yield this would result in a 77% overall crude yield for a 26 amino acid peptide, if each coupling were 95% efficient, the overall yield would be 25%. Thus highly optimized amide bond formation conditions are required, employing highly efficient coupling reagents and adding in excess of each amino acid. The minimization of amino acid racemization during coupling is also of vital importance to avoid epimerization in the final peptide product. Despite being thermodynamically favorable, direct amide bond formation between an amine and carboxylic acid suffers from a high activation energy, and as such often requires high temperatures. In light of the requirement for highly efficient coupling reactions discussed above, coupling reagents or activators are therefore used for amide bond formation during peptide synthesis. Activation of the carboxyl group of the amino acid to be coupled greatly increases reaction efficiency, often via the formation of a more reactive active ester species in situ. Many peptide coupling reagents exist a selection of which are described below. Carbidiimides such as dicyclohexyl carbidiimide and diisopropyl carbidiimide are frequently used for amide bond formation. The reaction proceeds via the formation of a highly reactive oacillosourea formed by nucleophilic attack of the carboxylate oxygen on the carbidiimide carbon. Subsequent aminolysis of this reactive species by the peptide N-terminal amine forms a peptide bond. DIC is particularly useful for SPPS as it easily handled as a liquid, and the urea byproduct formed is soluble in most organic solvents, allowing facile removal during resin washes. Conversely, the related carbidiimide 1 ethyl 3 carbidiimide is often used for solution phase peptide couplings as the urea byproduct in this case is water soluble, and can therefore be removed easily by washing during aqueous workup. A potential disadvantage of carbidiimide activation is the potential for racemization of the activated amino acid. This can be circumvented through the addition of racemization suppressing additives such as the triazoles 1 hydroxy benzotriazole and 1 hydroxy 7 aza benzotriazole. These work by attacking the oacillosuria intermediate to form an active ester in situ, which subsequently reacts with the peptide to form the desired amine bond. HOAT is particularly reactive due to a neighboring group effect involving the pyridyl nitrogen atom. Ethyl cyanohydroxyimmunostate is a more recently developed additive for carbidiimide coupling, and acts as an alternative to the potentially explosive triazole reagents with comparable coupling efficiency to HOAT. 
More recently developed and commonly used coupling reagents omit the carbidiimide completely and incorporate the HO at slash HOBT moiety as an aminium slash uranium or phosphonium salt of a non nucleophilic anion. Examples of aminium slash uranium reagents include HATU, HBTU slash TBTU and HCTU. HBTU and TBTU differ only in the choice of anion. Phosphonium reagents include PIBOP and PIAOP. It should be noted that these reagents form the same active ester species as the carbidiimide activation conditions described above, but differ in the rate of the initial activation step, which is determined by nature of the carbon skeleton of the coupling reagent. Furthermore, aminium slash uranium reagents are capable of reacting with the peptide N terminus to form an inactive guanidino byproduct, whereas as phosphonium reagents are not. COMU is a novel uranium reagent based on oxima and incorporating a morpholino group. Solid supports for peptide synthesis must be physically stable and permit the rapid filtration of liquids such as excess reagents, must be inert to all reagents and solvents used during SPPS, must swell extensively in the solvents used to allow for penetration of the reagents, and must allow for the attachment of the first amino acid. There are three primary types of solid supports, gel type supports, surface type supports, and composites. Improvements to solid supports used for peptide synthesis enhance their ability to withstand the repeated use of TFA during the deprotection step of SPPS. Two primary resins are used, based on whether a C-terminal carboxylic acid or amide is desired. The Wang resin was, as of 1996, the most commonly used resin for peptides with C-terminal carboxylic acids. As described above, the use of N-terminal and side-chain protecting groups is essential during peptide synthesis to avoid undesirable side reactions, such as self-coupling of the activated amino acid leading to. This would compete with the intended peptide coupling reaction resulting in low yield or even complete failure to synthesize the desired peptide. Two principal orthogonal protecting group schemes exist for use in solid phase peptide synthesis, so-called BOC-BZL and FMOC-T-Bulletin approaches. The BOC-BZL strategy utilizes TFA label and terminal BOC protection alongside side chain protection that is removed using anhydrous hydrogen fluoride during the final cleavage step. FMOC-T-Bulletin SPPS uses base label FMOC and terminal protection, with side chain protection and a resin linkage that are acid label. Both approaches including the advantages and disadvantages of each, are outlined in more detail below. The original method for peptide synthesis relied on tert butyloxycarbonyl as a temporary N-terminal amino protecting group. The Bach group is removed with acid, such as trifluoroacetic acid. This forms a positively charged amino group in the presence of excess TFA which is neutralized and coupled to the incoming activated amino acid. Neutralization can either occur prior to coupling or in situ during the basic coupling reaction. The BOC-BZL approach retains its usefulness in reducing peptide aggregation during synthesis. In addition, BOC-BZL-SPPS may be preferred over the FMOC-T-Bulletin approach when synthesizing peptides containing base-sensitive moieties, as treatment with base is required during the FMOC deprotection step. Permanent side-chain protecting groups used during BOC-BZL-SPPS are typically benzyl or benzyl-based groups. 
Final removal of the peptide from the solid support occurs simultaneously with side chain deprotection using anhydrous hydrogen fluoride via hydrolytic cleavage. The final product is a fluoride salt which is relatively easy to solubilize. Scavengers such as cresol must be added to the HF in order to prevent reactive T-butyl cations from generating undesired products. A disadvantage of this approach is the potential for degradation of the peptide by hydrogen fluoride. The use of N-terminal FMOC protection allows for a milder deprotection scheme than used for box bzl spps FMOC deprotection utilizes a base, typically 20-50% piperidine and DMF. The exposed amine is therefore neutral and consequently no neutralization of the peptide resin is required, as in the case of the box bzl approach. The lack of electrostatic repulsion between the peptide chains can lead to increased risk of aggregation with FMOC slash t bulletin SPPS however. Because the liberated fluoronyl group is a chromophore, FMOC deprotection can be monitored by UV absorbance of the reaction mixture, a strategy which is employed in automated peptide synthesizers. The ability of the FMOC group to be cleaved under relatively mild basic conditions while being stable to acid allows the use of side chain protecting groups such as Bach and T-Bulletin that can be removed in milder acidic final cleavage conditions than those used for final cleavage in Bach slash BZL SPPS. Scavengers such as water and triisopropyl silane are added during the final cleavage in order to prevent side reactions with reactive cationic species released as a result of side chain deprotection. The resulting crude peptide is obtained as a TFA salt, which is potentially more difficult to solubilize than the fluoride salts generated in Bach SPPS. FMOC-T-Bulletin SPPS is less atom-economical, as the fluoronyl group is much larger than the Bach group. Accordingly, prices for FMOC amino acids were high until the large-scale piloting of one of the first synthesized peptide drugs, infuvertide, began in the 1990s, when market demand adjusted the relative prices of FMOC vs Bach amino acids. The group is another carbamate type amine protecting group, first used by Max Bergman in the synthesis of oligopeptides. It is removed under harsh conditions using HBr in acetic acid, or milder conditions of catalytic hydrogenation. While it has been used periodically for amine protection in peptide synthesis, it is almost exclusively used for side chain protection. The alloxy carbonyl protecting group is sometimes used to protect an amino group when an orthogonal deprotection scheme is required. It is also sometimes used when conducting on resin cyclic peptide formation, where the peptide is linked to the resin by a side chain functional group. The alloc group can be removed using tetrachis polydium. For special applications like synthetic steps involving protein microarrays, protecting groups sometimes termed lithographic are used, which are amenable to photochemistry at a particular wavelength of light, and so which can be removed during lithographic types of operations. The formation of multiple native disulfides remains one of the primary challenges of native peptide synthesis by solid phase methods. Random chain combination typically results in several products with non-native disulfide bonds. Stepwise formation of disulfide bonds is typically the preferred method, and performed with thiol protecting groups. Different thiol protecting groups provide multiple dimensions of orthogonal protection. These orthogonally protected cysteines are incorporated during the solid phase synthesis of the peptide. Successive removal of these groups, to allow for selective exposure of free thiol groups, 
leads to disulfide formation in a stepwise manner. The order of removal of the groups must be considered so that only one group is removed at a time. Using this method, Kizo and co-workers reported the first total synthesis of insulin in 1993. Thiol protecting groups used in peptide synthesis requiring later regioselective disulfide bond formation must possess multiple characteristics. First, they must be reversible with conditions that do not affect the unprotected side chains. Second, the protecting group must be able to withstand the conditions of solid phase synthesis. Third, the removal of the thiol protecting group must be such that it leaves intact other thiol protecting groups, if orthogonal protection is desired. That is, the removal of PGA should not affect PGB. Some of the thiol protecting groups commonly used include the acetamidamethyl, tert butyl, 3 nitro 2 pyridine sulfenyl, 2 pyridine sulfenyl and triphenylmethyl groups. Importantly, the NPYS group can replace the ACMPG to yield an activated thiol. Important to the discussion of disulfide bond formation is the order in which disulfides are formed. The synthesis insulin by Kizo and co-workers is illustrative of the logic and methods for regioselective disulfide bond formation. In this work, the A chain of insulin was prepared with following protecting groups in place on its cysteines, CYSA6, CYSA7, and CYSA11, leaving CYSA20 unprotected. Synthesis of the B chain was performed with the following protecting groups in place CYSB7 and CYSB19. The first disulfide bond, CYSA20, CYSB19, was formed by mixing the two chains in 8M urea, pH 8 for 50 minutes, while the second disulfide bond, CYSA7, CYSB7, was formed by treatment with iodine and aqueous acetic acid to remove the ACM groups. The third disulfide, the intramolecular CYSA6, CYSA11, was formed after the removal of the but groups by methyl trichlorosilane with diphenyl sulfoxide in TFA. Importantly, formation of the first disulfide in 8M urea, pH 8 does not affect the other protecting groups, namely ACM and but groups. Likewise, Formation of the second disulfide bond with iodine in aqueous acetic acid does not affect the but groups. From a logical standpoint, the order in which the thiol groups are exposed to form disulfides should be of little consequence, since the other cysteines are protected, however, it is observed, practically, that the order in which disulfides are formed can have a significant effect on yields. Stepwise elongation, in which the amino acids are connected step by step in turn, is ideal for small peptides containing between 2 and 100 amino acid residues. Another method is fragment condensation, in which peptide fragments are coupled. Although the former can elongate the peptide chain without racemization, the yield drops if only it is used in the creation of long or highly polar peptides. Fragment condensation is better than stepwise elongation for synthesizing sophisticated long peptides, but its use must be restricted in order to protect against racemization. Fragment condensation is also undesirable since the coupled fragment must be in gross excess which may be a limitation depending on the length of the fragment. A new development for producing longer peptide chains is chemical ligation. Unprotected peptide chains react chemoselectively in aqueous solution. A first kinetically controlled product rearranges to form the amide bond. 
The most common form of native chemical ligation uses a peptide thioester that reacts with a terminal cysteine residue. Other methods applicable for covalently linking polypeptides in aqueous solution include the use of split intians, spontaneous isopeptide bond formation and sortase ligation. In order to optimize synthesis of long peptides, a method was developed in Medicon Valley for converting peptide sequences. The simple pre-sequence, glutamic acid, and that is incorporated at the C terminus of the peptide to induce an alpha helix like structure. This can potentially increase biological half life, improve peptide stability, and inhibit enzymatic degradation without altering pharmacological activity or profile of action. Although microwave irradiation has been around since the late 1940s, it was not until 1986 that microwave energy was used in organic chemistry. During the end of the 1980s and 1990s, microwave energy was an obvious source for completing chemical reactions in minutes that would otherwise take several hours to days. Through several technical improvements at the end of the 1990s and beginning of the 2000s, Microwave synthesizers have been designed to provide both low and high energy pockets of microwave energy so that the temperature of the reaction mixture could be controlled. Microwave assisted peptide synthesis uses a single frequency which provides maximum penetration depth of the sample, in contrast to conventional kitchen microwaves. In peptide synthesis, Microwave irradiation has been used to complete long peptide sequences with high degrees of yield and low degrees of racemization. Microwave irradiation during the coupling of amino acids to a growing polypeptide chain is catalyzed not only by the increase in temperature but also by the alternating electric field of the microwave. This is because the polar end terminal amine group and peptide backbone continuously try to align with the alternating electric field, thus helping prevent aggregation and increasing access to the solid phase reaction matrix. This increases yields of the final peptide products. There is however no clear evidence that microwave is better than simple heating and some peptide laboratories regard microwave just as a convenient method for rapid heating of the peptidyl resin. Heating to above 50. 55 degrees Celsius also prevents aggregation and accelerates the coupling. Despite the main advantages of microwave irradiation of peptide synthesis, the main disadvantage is the racemization which may occur with the coupling of cysteine and histidine. A typical coupling reaction with these amino acids are performed at lower temperatures than the other 18 natural amino acids. A number of peptides do not survive microwave synthesis or heating in general. One of the more serious side effects is dehydration which for certain peptides can be almost quantitative like pancreatic polypeptide. This side effect is also seen by simple heating without the use of microwave. Peptides can be cyclized on a solid support. A variety of silization reagents can be used such as HBTU slash HOBT slash DIEA. Pibop slash DIEA, Pi Clock slash DIEA. Head to tail peptides can be made on the solid support. The deprotection of the C terminus at some suitable point allows on resin cyclization by amide bond formation with the deprotected end terminus. Once cyclization has taken place, the peptide is cleaved from resin by acidolysis and purified. The strategy for the solid phase synthesis of cyclic peptides is not limited to attachment through ASP, GLU, or list side chains. Cysteine has a very reactive sulfhydryl group on its side chain. A disulfide bridge is created when a sulfur atom from one cysteine forms a single covalent bond with another sulfur atom from a second cysteine in a different part of the protein. 
These bridges help to stabilize proteins, especially those secreted from cells. Some researchers use modified cysteines using S-acetomidimethyl to block the formation of the disulfide bond but preserve the cysteine and the protein's original primary structure. Off-resin cyclization is a solid phase synthesis of key intermediates, followed by the key cyclization in solution phase. The final deprotection of any masked side chains is also carried out in solution phase. This has the disadvantages that the efficiencies of solid phase synthesis are lost in the solution phase steps, that purification from byproducts, reagents, and unconverted material is required and that undesired oligomers can be formed if macrocycle formation is involved. The use of pentafluorophenyl esters PPO and BOP-CL are useful for cyclosing peptides.